And we're back. It's your boys here at J.R. Peters, Dan Gillespie, and myself, Mason Day. And it's time for another dose of Getting Technical. And this week, we're talking alkalinity and how it affects your pH. So, Dan, let's start there. Alkalinity, what is it? Yeah, alkalinity is the measure of particular solution capacity to neutralize acids. And it's dependent on the presence of carbonates, bicarbonates, and hydroxide. Um, can basically be thought as the buffering capacity of a solution. So put simply, water with very high alkalinity is going to require more acid to lower the pH, and it's also going to have a greater tendency for the pH to rise back up on you, as opposed to water with very low alkalinity, which may just require small amounts of acid and um, to lower the pH to the desired range. Um, but really, what it's really important to, to know that the alkalinity of your source water has a very, very strong effect on the substrate pH. Um, and in fact, the alkalinity, it may have more of an influence on the actual substrate pH than the present than the actual water pH. Um, so, you know, ideally, we want our irrigation water to be around a, a 50 to 150 parts per million calcium carbonate. All right. So what if your alkalinity is outside of that range of that 50 to 150 parts per million calcium carbonate? How do we raise or lower the alkalinity? Yeah. So let's start with lowering alkalinity. So we, we can, you know, as I mentioned, high alkalinity, it may cause the substrate pH to increase over time. So this is really important when you have crops that are going to be grown in small containers or grown for long durations of time. Um, so it may be necessary to decrease the alkalinity of the water, and we can do this by the addition of mineral acids or potentially acidic fertilizers will also kind of take some our alkalinity down and help with our pH as well. Um, so really popular acid sources in horticulture, sulfuric acid, um, it's typically the cheapest um, and most effective route to go, but some people may use phosphoric or nitric acid as well, or maybe even citric acid. Um, but I would do want to note, you don't want to use a water softener to remove alkalinity because that will actually add sodium, which is harmful to the plant back into the water. Um, so on the flip side, we have, you know, in some cases we may need to raise our alkalinity. This is especially true for, uh, people growing with reverse osmosis water or other pure water sources are going to be, have little to no alkalinity. So in those cases, we may want to add some alkalinity back in to help buffer, to add some buffering capacity back into the water, right? Help stabilize our pH. Um, so we can do this by using um, a Jack's potassium bicarbonate or calcium and magnesium containing fertilizers are also um, going to help kind of raise the pH as well. Um, and that's another thing to note is that the low alkalinity waters do typically lack calcium and magnesium. So we do typically need to incorporate fertilizers that contain calcium and magnesium with All low right. alkalinity water sources. All right. That makes sense. Uh, acid's going to reduce the alkalinity. You know, it's funny. Uh, growing up in the greenhouse world, uh, we had to like reduce the alkalinity of our water. And I used to have to go buy sulfuric acid, like battery acid from Napa yeah. Auto Parts. And uh, yep. as a 15, 16 year old kid, they'd always look at me real weird. And then the, the guy in the back would be like, it's for a greenhouse. So it totally gets you there. Um, yep. And you know, potassium bicarbonate is going to raise your alkalinity. And you also mentioned fertilizer has an effect on the pH. Can you speak on that more, Dan? Yeah. So each fertilizer formula is going to affect the solution and the substrate pH a little bit differently. Um, and the effect that the fertilizer formula does have on the solution and the substrate pH, it, it's dependent on the raw materials that are used in that formulation, right? Um, so, and th this information is going to be documented on the fertilizer label, and it's termed potential acidity, or if it's basic, potential basicity. And this is provided in terms of calcium carbonate equivalent, abbreviated as CCE per ton. So you'll see that on the fertilizer labels is potential acidity is X amount of CCE per ton. 
Um, and this value, it refers to the effect that each formula is going to have on the substrate pH over time. But it, it's really important to remember this is termed potential, right? So a potential acidity or base acidity. So th that means that the water quality, the substrate being used, those are also going to have an effect um, on the pH as well. So it's just important to consider that it's not the end all be all effect. All right. CCE. Got it. Uh, is there anything else about the fertilizer that can affect pH? Certainly is. And uh, it's mainly the, the nitrogen form is something you want to consider when you're looking at how, how is this fertilizer going to affect my pH? Um, so uh, general rule of thumb is ammonium nitrogen-based fertilizers are going to be more on the acidic side and will lower pH while nitrate-based fertilizers um, will have a tendency to raise our pH. And that's because when the plant uptakes nitrogen, it, it kind of, it will raise the pH there. All right. So, you know, we talked about calcium, magnesium. Now we're also learning that nitrogen form has a large impact. So how do we bring all this together, Dan? Yeah, Mason, it's a great question. Um, and that's kind of what we have to do, right? Now we kind of know all this. How, how do we account for it? Um, so the information on the CCE, the calcium carbonate equivalent, potential base acidity, potentially basic. So that the CCE, the nitrogen form of the formulation, this information, along with our source water alkalinity value, we can really kind of bring that together and select a fertilizer to aid in pH management or to promote pH being in that desired range. So source water is real high in alkalinity, over 150 to 200 parts per million of calcium carbonate. They may be better suited for fertilizers that are potentially acidic or may have some ammonium nitrogen incorporated in there. Alternatively, source waters with lower alkalinity, those RO source waters are likely better suited for potentially basic or nitrate based fertilizers. So the JAX321 type program, for example. Um, and just to, so that's kind of how we bring all that together, right? We're looking at the fertilizer label and then looking at our source water alkalinity and kind of bringing that together. But most soilless and hydroponic fertilizer formulas going to be primarily nitrate based because too much ammonium, especially under cool weather and things like that, can really cause the pH to tank, really drop on us. And, and in some cases may even cause ammonium toxicity. Um, so, you know, we, we can select fertilizers to aid in pH management. But in a lot of cases, we will need the addition of an acid or base to help us out as well. All right. Well, hey, Dan, I think we got it this week. And, you know, I, this is uh, the, the PSA going out is that even though all of your fitness influencers on Instagram may suggest that you drink only alkaline water, uh, I, I see that as like a huge trend right now, <laughs> that it's important that alkaline water is not the only answer for your plants, but it's important to keep things balanced and know what your plants need and when they need it. And that's why, you know, it's important to track your pH and know how to raise and lower it when you have to. So until next time, have a great week and we'll see you again on Getting Technical. And always, you can submit questions, uh, you know, in the comments, on YouTube, on Instagram, wherever you're seeing this, or uh, shoot us an email to info at jacksnutrients.com. And uh, yeah, if you know, we get enough of your question, you might just see us answer it right here. All right, take it easy. Good stuff, Mason. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.